Hello, everyone. Hello, welcome to uh, BioCool uh, classes. Today's uh, topic is uh, photorespiration. Uh, then we have, uh, we will learn about uh, C4 plants. What are C4 plants? How C4 plants, they uh, evade or uh, they, uh, uh, they take care of the photorespiration problem. And uh, we will also uh, learn about the CAM plants, that is crassulation acid metabolism. Um, so let's begin. So just a few uh, import, important uh, information about biocool classes. Uh, this is the Telegram link. So uh, you can join uh, via this telegram link uh, to the biocool telegram uh, channel and uh, here uh, anybody who joins can also post and you can get all valuable valuable information um so as i said today's uh, topic uh, we will cover some important uh, uh, concepts like the photorespiration uh, which is happening in the c3 plants and then we learn about uh, C4 plants, how C4 plants, they minimize photorespiration. And then we will also study about CAM, uh, which are basically plants which are present in the desert, uh, how they uh, uh, carry out their type of photosynthesis, how they uh, tackle the different challenges which uh, uh, plant in the desert, in the hot and arid uh, situation in the, the uh, face. So what is photorespiration? Now, we learned about the Kelvin cycle. So first, let's, uh, in previous lecture of biocool classes, we have discussed about uh, the Kelvin cycle. As you can see here in the Kelvin cycle, that uh, okay. as you can see in the Kelvin cycle. Uh, in Kelvin cycle, first of all, it takes place in the stroma of the chloroplast. And uh, in the Kelvin cycle, there is a uh, fixation of carbon dioxide. And uh, carbon dioxide is fixed by uh, ribulose 1,5 bisphosphate. And uh, we can see how there is actually formation of the first compound, which is PGA or 3-phosphoglycerate. Very important thing, which we need to uh, focus here, is about the enzyme, which is called Rubisco. Okay, so let's look at uh, Rubisco. So this is basically uh, the enzyme. Rubisco. And uh, this enzyme is catalyzing the whole reaction between uh, ribulose bisphosphate and carbon dioxide. Um, so basically what is happening that these two compounds, they react, they form a six carbon compound. That six carbon compound is split into three carbon compound, which is the three phosphoglycerate by Rubisco. Now, this is happening in the uh, C3 plants, okay? Uh, what are the C3 plants? The C3 plants are, uh, we have uh, sunflower is an example of C3 plant. Then we have uh, spinach, we have beans, we have rice, we have cotton. Uh, so these are all the examples of the C3 plant, very important. Sunflower, spinach, bean, rice, and cotton. Now, what is happening in C3 plants is, if we look at this diagram, we can clearly see that when, this is basically the picture of the uh, leaf internal structure, and we can see this is the upper epidermis and these are the, here we see the mesophyll cells. So these are the mesophyll cells here. Uh, 
Uh, we see the palisades uh, parenchyma. Uh, we have the spongy parenchyma. And this is the lower epidermis. We see here the, uh, this is the stomata. And uh, you see um, under hot and arid condition, hot and dry condition, uh, what happens is uh, there is increase in transpiration, right? So there is loss of water. You can see how there is loss of water taking place. So plants, they want to preserve water. Otherwise, plants, they will, um, they will um, if they lose all the water, then that's, uh, plants will be desiccated. So that's the word. The desiccation will take place. Desiccation will lead to death of a plant. So to avoid that, plants, they close down their stomata uh, during hot and arid conditions. Okay. Um, so this leads to uh, this situation, the second situation. What is the situation? Uh, carbon dioxide is unable to enter into the intercellular space of the leaf. Right. Um, and oxygen, which is made during photosynthesis, this oxygen cannot uh, leave the uh, the plant, the leaves, right? So there is buildup of oxygen and the concentration of carbon dioxide falls, right? So let's just repeat this again. So during a very hot and dry uh, situation, in case of C3 plants, we see that since the stomata is closed uh, to... Uh, to uh, conserve water, uh, we see there is oxygen buildup inside the leaf cells and there is uh, also decrease in carbon dioxide. Now, when the carbon dioxide concentration, uh, it goes or it drops below 50 ppm, where ppm stands for parts per million. So ppm uh, stands for parts per million. Uh, this is a unit which is used to actually uh, measure uh, gas levels. Okay, So when uh, the carbon dioxide level drops below 50 ppm, then the enzyme Rubisco that catalyzes the first step of Kelvin cycle, Rubisco uh, has its affinity for oxygen it increases more than its affinity for carbon dioxide, okay? So instead of binding uh, carbon dioxide, in, in, instead of assimilating carbon dioxide, which happens during the Kelvin cycle, Rubisco prefers oxygen. Uh, and this is the main, uh, main or the first step of photorespiration. Uh, so let's now uh, look at the photorespiration, what is happening, that what, will happen when Rubisco binds to uh, uh, binds to oxygen. So we have here um, ribulose bisphosphate or 1,5 ribulose bisphosphate. And this uh, is interacting with the carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide, normally uh, it comes from outside. It enters the leaf uh, through the stomata. And here, what is happening? There is the enzyme Rubisco. Rubisco. And this Rubisco is basically taking care of this uh, reaction. Now, as I said, when the carbon dioxide concentration drops below 50 ppm, Rubisco has more affinity for oxygen. So instead of binding or instead of reacting with uh, carbon dioxide, it's going to now, oxygen will actually react with ribulose based phosphate. So uh, instead of forming, instead of forming the normal uh, 3PGA, which is phosphoglycerate or phosphoglyceric acid, there is formation of uh, phospho glycolate okay so instead of forming phosphoglycerate instead of forming 3 pga phosphoglycerate there is formation of phosphoglycolate because now carbon dioxide is not reacting with rubp in fact uh, oxygen is reacting with rubp leading to formation of uh, 
phosphoglycolate. Now, this phosphoglycolate uh, will now, so as we, are, we understand that this whole thing is happening inside the chloroplast. This is a disc shaped chloroplast, right? So, this is the chloroplast where this whole uh, um, the Kelvin cycle is taking place or the dark reaction is taking place in the stroma of the chloroplast. So this is the chloroplast stroma. Now this phosphoglycolate, which is formed by the reaction of RDBP and oxygen in photorespiration, this uh, now moves to um, uh, another organelle, which is the paroxysome. Paroxysome. So it moves to another organelle called the paroxysome. And from paroxysome, it moves to another organelle called the mitochondria into mitochondria. So if we follow the pathway of this, so and in mitochondria, we see one carbon dioxide molecule is coming out. You see? Uh, plants in case of Kelvin cycle, this is what where we have to really understand the concept. In case of Kelvin cycle, there is carbon assimilation, that is, there is fixation of carbon dioxide. In case of photorespiration, the opposite is happening. You see how carbon dioxide is released by the plants. So, there is loss of carbon assimilation, right? There is loss of carbon. So, photorespiration is a harmful process. To plants because here instead of fixing carbon dioxide instead of instead of assimilating carbon the plants they're losing carbon dioxide in this process so now eventually this whole process comes back to chloroplast and eventually there is formation of pga phosphoglycerate you see in kelvin cycle the first step is formation of PGA. In case of photorespiration, there is formation of phosphoglycolate. It goes to paroxysome, mitochondria. In mitochondria, it loses one carbon dioxide and ultimately it comes back to the chloroplast where now PGA is finally formed and this PGA now goes through the normal Kelvin cycle steps. That is, PGA will form glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Glycer glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Okay. And uh, from here, there will be regeneration of RUBP. Okay. So I think uh, I just have to... glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and uh, this is which is abbreviated as GA3P and GA3P is then regenerated back to RUBP. Okay. And as we know that from 3PGA to GA3P, there will be a reduction. So ATP to ADP and NADPH will get converted to NADP. So this is a reduction happening. So this step is reduction. Okay. Reduction happening. So just to recap, uh, when there is, you know, during a hot and uh, a dry situation where the stomata close, there is high concentration of carbon, uh, high carbon concentration of oxygen within the uh, plant leaf. And there is low concentration of carbon dioxide because due to closure of the stomata, the uh, carbon dioxide cannot enter the plant uh, leaf. Uh, the Rubisco, it, it, it acts uh, differently. Rubisco now catalyzes the reaction between oxygen and RUBP, leading to the formation of uh, phosphoglycolate instead of 3PGA. Phosphoglycolate leaves chloroplast, moves to paroxysome, mitochondria. Here at mitochondria, uh, it loses one uh, molecule of carbon dioxide, and then uh, this whole uh, reaction comes back to chloroplast, where um, 
it ultimately forms uh, 3-TGA or phosphoglycerate. And this phosphoglycerate now is reduced to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And uh, we know that glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, one molecule of GA3P uh, comes out of the uh, Kelvin cycle and it forms glucose. Uh, and uh, this remaining molecules of GA3P now they are regenerated back to RUBP and this cycle goes on. So ultimately, due to photorespiration, there is 25% loss of carbon dioxide that is assimilated, that is assimilated by plants during the process of photosynthesis, during the process of photosynthesis. So photorespiration in uh, simple terms, uh, it causes 25% loss of carbon fixation or carbon, so 25% loss in carbon assimilation. Okay, so let's look at the uh, photorespiration um, steps. So this uh, picture here, it shows a simplified uh, picture of the photorespiration here. Here we can see on the left-hand corner, the normal Kelvin cycle. And this is basically the photorespiration. And as you can see that the below 1,5-bis phosphate, uh, this is actually uh, reacting with oxygen. And Rubisco is catalyzing this reaction, formation of 2-phosphoglycolate instead of 3-phosphoglycerate. So this 2-phosphoglycolate, now it uh, carries out uh, or carries on its journey into peroxisome mitochondria. In the mitochondria, you can see how there is a loss of carbon dioxide. And then this whole uh, reaction comes back to uh, chloroplast, where eventually 3-phosphoglycerate is formed. And once 3 phosphoglycerate is formed, it uh, now carries out its normal uh, journey. Uh, that is, as you can see in this lower uh, left uh, picture, that it forms GA3P or glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And then glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate regenerates back to RUBP. Uh, this is a more uh, detailed uh, picture of the photorespiration. Um, as you can see here, we have the complete details. This is the Kelvin cycle, and we can see how here carb oxygen uh, is actually uh, binding to RUBP, you see, because of the increase of oxygen concentration on a hot and dry day. Uh, this is how the RUBP now uh, is going through uh, this photorespiration pathway. You see the reaction is leaving chloroplast, entering peroxisome. And from peroxisome, it's going back to mitochondria, where we can see here a carbon dioxide is lost. And this comes back to chloroplast. And it uh, actually uh, starts the, you see it come back to chloroplast, and then uh, three phosphoglycerate is formed. Um, all right. Few um, characteristics of photorespiration. So uh, just uh, information of what are peroxisomes. You can see this is a peroxisome. This is a plant cell. This is peroxisome. This is chloroplast. This is mitochondria. So basically, the autorespiration, it is happening uh, involving these three organelles. Again, this is a very important question uh, which uh, students get during exams. Name the organelles involved in uh, photorespiration. OK? All right. Coming to the disadvantages of photorespiration. So photorespiration causes 25% loss of, here, it causes 25% loss of carbon that is fixed during the photosynthetic carbon fixation. And this is the paper which here uh, the reference uh, 
is the reference paper where uh, this has been proved uh, by uh, carrying out experiments. And uh, also during photorespiration, there is formation of uh, ammonia. So plants, they have a added headache of um, getting rid of ammonia. There is formation of ammonia during photorespiration. So this has to be, uh, it has to be, uh, plants have to get rid of ammonia because ammonia is a toxic uh, compound. It's a toxic chemical. So this is another additional headache of the plants. Um, and there's also loss of one ATP and one NADPH um, during photorespiration. So these are all the disadvantages of photorespiration, which the C3 plants, they have to undergo. Uh, examples of C3 plants and C4 plants. So this is... Uh, Here, uh, this slide uh, shows the examples of C3 plants, sunflower, spinach, beans, rice, cotton. I've already talked about it. C4 plants are more evolved plants. Uh, so examples are corn, pineapple, sugarcane. These plants, they have devised a mechanism in which they can minimize this loss of carbon assimilation. Uh, C4 plants are normally found in the dry and arid uh, conditions. And they have found out a, a, a mechanism in which they can reduce this loss of carbon dioxide. So what, uh, what does the C4 plants do? Let's discuss that. So C4 plants, so C4 plants, they minimize photorespiration. How is this happening? Um, so if you go to uh, the C4 plants, the C4 plants, uh, if you look at their uh, anatomy, so anatomy of C4 plants. So these C4 plants, they have a type of anatomy which is called the trans anatomy. This is a very, very important question. Uh, what is trans anatomy? So trans uh, anatomy means in case of C4 plants, if you take a cross section of a C4 plant leaf, there you will see that the mesophyll cells. So let's say this is the upper epidermis. Let's say this is the upper epidermis. Okay. So uh, this is the upper epidermis of the leaf. Uh, just to make things more clear, we are looking at a cross section of a leaf, a 3D cross section of a leaf in a C4 plant, which has the trans anatomy. Trans anatomy. So now, uh, if you look at this, uh, uh, if you look at the mesophyll cells, the mesophyll cells, they are present as, you see how they are present as a circle. They're present as a circle. So they're circling the inner bundle sheet. So I'm drawing the bundle sheet in a different color. So here are cells called the bundle sheet. These brown cells. So I'm just drawing, they're not brown, but just I'm drawing so to differentiate between the mesophyll cells and the uh, bundle sheet cells. So this is the, these are the mesophyll cells. Now, uh, just one point to remember, in case of C3 plants, the Kelvin cycle taking place in the mesophyll cells, inside the chloroplast stroma of the mesophyll cells. In case of C4 plant, Kelvin cycle is taking place in the bundle sheet cells. So this, these are the bundle sheet cells, okay? Inside the bundle sheet is again circling the Vascular bundles, vascular bundles. So 
this is the vascular bundle. So here we have the xylem. Here we have the phloem, right? Xylem transfers water and minerals, which is called the sap. Water minerals combined is called the sap, SAP sap. And phloem, it actually translocates or transports food that is made during photosynthesis. What is that? Glucose, uh, phloem transports uh, food in the form of sucrose. So glucose is converted into sucrose and sucrose is a transport form of food in case of plants. Okay. So this is in joint. This is called combined. This is called the bundle, uh, vascular bundle. This is called the vascular the xylem and the phloem is called the vascular bundle. Vascular bundle. Okay. So this arrangement, this ring-like arrangement is called the Kranz anatomy and it looks like the ret. What does it look like? So uh, this is actually having the the red so this is like a garland it's like a flower garland kind of appearance so let's now look at uh, some figures that will explain this whole concept of the so here in this picture we can see on my um, on my left side, you can see this is a C3 plant anatomy. Um, and on my right side, you can see the C4 plant, that is what we see in case of sugarcane. Um, uh, this is the kind of arrangement. This is called the Kranz anatomy. As you can see how the mesophyll cells are arranged. You see, this is the mesophyll cells, how they're circling the inside uh, bundle sheet cells these are the bundle sheet cells they are circling the bundle sheet cells and you see that uh, the bundle sheet is again circling the mid vein the mid vein this is the mid vein which is basically the xylem and the phloem right um so this is basically the vein uh, so this is the crans and other so now the question is that how is this minimizing the photorespiration so we need to understand that concept that is the central idea that why the C4 plants have this Kranz anatomy. So again, I talked about RET. Uh, so before we get into the biochemistry, let's uh, first understand the anatomy. So as I said, that this is how the whole flowers arranged in circle in a RET kind of thing, which we normally give during a uh, funeral, uh, this uh, RET is given, uh, right? And uh, you can see this, uh, Kranz anatomy, this whole concept of the mesophyll circling the bundle sheet cell, uh, it has this red kind of uh, yeah, uh, appearance. So that's why this whole uh, Kranz anatomy. Okay, So Kranz means red anatomy of the C4 leaf. So why is this important? So let's go into this figure. And this figure explains that how the C4 plants are minimizing the photorespiration. Now, as you can see here, as you can see how carbon dioxide is entering into the mesophyll cells, right? So this is the mesophyll cell, all right? Now, in the mesophyll cell, as you can see in this figure, there is no uh, Kelvin cycle taking place. In fact, uh, instead of ribulose-based phosphate, which is present in the stroma of the chloroplast in case of a C3 plant. Here, the mesophyll cell has PEP, that is phosphoenol pyruvate. You see, phosphoenol pyruvate is now binding or reacting with carbon dioxide and they're forming oxaloacetate, which is a four carbon compound. Now, uh, we can clearly see each ball, each brown ball represents a carbon. Uh, so there is oxaloacetate or we write OAA, oxaloacetic acid, which is basically the first compound. So it's a, it's a four carbon compound, 4C. That's why these plants are called C4 plants. All right. Um, in case of C3 plants, 
in Kelvin cycle, what is the first compound forming? Rebulose bisphosphate reacting with carbon dioxide forming 3PGA, phosphoglycerate, which is a three carbon compound. That's why uh, flowers like sunflower, all these plants we call as like cotton, like rice, we call them C3 plants because the first compound formed during Kelvin cycle is a three carbon compound. In case of a C4 plant like pineapple, uh, you see what is happening there. The first compound that is formed is oxaloacetate, which is a four, car four carbon compound. So that's why we call C4 plants. Now this oxaloacetate is then converted into mallet. Uh, mallet now enters into the bundle sheath cells. Now here is the whole concept. Mallet is entering into the bundle sheath cells. This mallet is then decarboxylated. It is called oxidative decarboxylation because mallet is getting oxidized to pyruvate. Okay, and there is carbon dioxide. So this is called oxidative decarboxylation process. And there is carbon dioxide is coming out. Now, this is the carbon dioxide that is now participating in the Kelvin cycle. Here in, in the bundle sheet cells, we have ribulose bisphosphate, we have Rubisco, and they are assimilating carbon dioxide and they're carrying out the normal uh, Kelvin cycle where glucose is produced, um, right? And here the carbon dioxide concentration is very high. It is much above 50 ppm, right? So, uh, so this is how the C4 plants they are bypassing this whole problem. They're minimizing this uh, water respiration. So this pyruvate now, let me finish this whole uh, biochemical pathway. Pyruvate now leaves the bundle sheet cells. It enters the mesophyll cells where pyruvate is then uh, converted uh, back to phosphoenol pyruvate. Look, phospho group 1 ATP is getting used up and uh, a phosphate uh, group is joining. So phosphoenol pyruvate, again, phosphoenol pyruvate is ready to accept uh, another molecule of carbon dioxide, which is coming from outside. And they are forming, again, the first compound, which is the oxaloacetate, which is the C4 compound, and this whole thing goes on, thus minimizing photorespiration. There is no uh, reaction between, uh, between uh, uh, ribulose bisphosphate and oxygen. So that thing is not happening. There is no loss of uh, carbon dioxide, no loss in carbon assimilation, which happens in case of C3 plants. Okay, so this is uh, C4 plants. This is the concept of the Kranz anatomy. And uh, here, uh, another diagram showing the same concept. You see, this is the C3 pathway, which is happening on, only in the mesophyll cells. And in the bottom, we can see, and you can also see the normal uh, C3 plant uh, anatomy. Uh, where uh, you see the mesophyll cells are um, uh, present below the upper epidermis. It is not circling the bundle sheet cells, but when you look at the uh, C4 plants, you see the Kranz concept, the red concept, where the mesophyll cells surrounding the inner bundle sheet, and thus they're uh, avoiding any kind of photorespiration process taking place. Okay. With that information, we move to another very important uh, concept, which is the crassulation acid metabolism or the CAM pathway, uh, which is also called the nighttime reaction. So what is this whole? So the CAM pathway is again, very similar to this whole C4 uh, pathway. Um, and the same kind of concept is adapted by the desert plants. Uh, so uh, crassulation, means uh, plants belonging to the uh, Crassulacea family and they're belonging to the Cactacea family, okay? So here, so succulent plants, succulent plants means plants which can retain lots of water because we know in desert, there is actually a uh, very less rainfall. So these plants leaves, they have a lot of water, right? Uh, so these are, so the Crassulacean, uh, Crassulacea uh, family belong to uh, members from the Cactacea and the Crassulacea. So we can look at some of this actually uh, pictures of these kind of uh, plants. So these plants. So here uh, you see that on my um, this is basically the Crassulacea family and these are the Cactacea family uh, desert plants. So they adapt something called the CAM pathway. CAM pathway is basically it's it's a combination of the C3 and the C4. Um, 
but everything is happening inside the mesophyll cells. So in case of plants following the CAM pathway, they have uh, they don't have uh, separate bundle sheet cells where the Kelvin cycle is taking place. Their Kelvin cycle takes place in the mesophyll cells, just like the C3 plants. Just like the C3 plants, uh, their Kelvin cycle is happening in the mesophyll cell. But, but there is a big but. There is, uh, there is uh, the, the carbon fixation. Okay, this is a very important part. The carbon assimilation and the Kelvin cycle they are separated by day and night. In other words, the carbon assimilation is taking place in the night time and the Kelvin cycle takes place in the daytime. Uh, so we will learn about that concept, why such a day-night separation is happening in case of this, uh, these plants. So now, as uh, going back to the whole concept of um, hot and arid conditions, so we know that uh, Due to hot and arid condition, uh, the stomata remains closed. Um, and desert plants have the same problem. Desert plants, they, they, in the desert, the uh, sun is very scorching hot. It's very dry. So obviously, the desert plants, they uh, cannot, they don't have the privilege to keep their stomata open um, during the daytime because that will lead to massive loss in water by transpiration. Uh, and that will cause the plants to be desiccated, right? Um, remember, these are desert plants. In desert, uh, we know rainfall happens uh, rarely. So these plants, they have to preserve a lot of water, right? So now what happens here is that, uh, so in case of these uh, Crassulaceae family and the Cactaceae family, they cannot open their stomata in the morning time. So how can they carry out photosynthesis? If they can't open stomata, they cannot take in, uh, take in carbon dioxide. Without carbon dioxide, there cannot be a Kelvin cycle. There cannot be a dark reaction. So the process of photosynthesis will not take place. So in order to, uh, uh, in order to accept this challenge, so they um, have, they take in the carbon dioxide in the they take in the carbon dioxide in the night time. And this whole concept of keeping the stomata open in the night time. Uh, so in the night time, they keep their stomata open. And this whole concept is called the scotoactive opening. Scotoactive means scoto means living and flourishing in darkness. So these plants, these desert plants, they keep their stomata open during the night time. In the morning time, they close their stomata. This whole uh, concept is called the to active opening. Okay. Now, so what is the CAM pathway? So let's try to understand the CAM pathway. So the CAM pathway. The CAM pathway. In case of CAM pathway, we see that in the night time, the uh, carbon dioxide is coming inside the inside the plant uh, mesophyll cell. So let's say this is a mesophyll cell. So let's say this is a mesophyll cell. Okay. This is a mesophyll cell. And uh, here in the mesophyll cell, let me just put this in the top. Here we have uh, the guard cells. And uh, all the reactions which is happening in the night time, I will uh, draw them as with blue arrow. So in the night time, you see the blue arrow means this is night time, this is happening. Uh, there is entry of carbon dioxide and this is the scotoactive opening the stomata remains open in the night time so let me just so we say stomata open during night time during night time so now uh, this carbon dioxide now now here, I said that this uh, camp, camp pathway, they combine the C4 and the C3, right? 
So why it is C3? What is the characteristics of the C3? Because it is taking place, the Kelvin cycle takes place in the mesophyll cells. What is the characteristics of the C4 plants? Here, carbon dioxide is accepted by phosphoenol pyruvate. Here, so we have, um, let me use the color uh, pink. So phosphoenol pyruvate, this reacts with carbon dioxide. And just like uh, just like a C4 plant, there is formation of oxaloacetic acid or oxaloacetate. That is the C4 compound. It has it's a four carbon compound. So uh, just concentrate on the blue arrows because blue arrow means these are taking place in the nighttime. These reactions. So this oxaloacetic acid now forms malate or malic acid. Okay, uh, again, this is the reduction step. Oxaloacetic acid is reduced, reduced to mallet. This mallet now enters into something called the vacuole. This is the plant vacuole. And uh, inside the plant vacuole, we have these mallet shuttle. What do we call this? So first of all, this is the plant uh, mesophyll cell vacuole. We all know what's a plant vacuole. And this is called the mallet, mallet shuttle that allows the entry of the mallet inside the plant vacuole. So now mallet is now inside the plant vacuole. Remember, all these things are taking place in the nighttime. So let's just draw a, a blue arrow and let's say that the blue arrow means night time reactions okay and let's say this is basically the mesophyll cell the mesophyll cell and uh, i will also draw red arrows that will mean daytime reactions daytime reactions okay so the mallet stays inside the vacuole during the night time and again in when the morning happens when the sun comes out the mallet is coming out into the cytoplasm okay so this is the cytoplasm okay and here is the disc shaped chloroplast so now the mallet it enters so again it is coming out through the mallet shuttle and it is entering into the chloroplast where mallet is oxidatively decarboxylated. Again, the same reactions as C4. It is oxidatively decarboxylated to pyruvate. To pyruvate. When I say oxidatively decarboxylated, that means from here, Carbon dioxide is coming out. Carbon, the same carbon dioxide that was assimilated during the night time, that is coming out. This carbon dioxide now this carbon dioxide now enters the Kelvin cycle. So here I will draw the Kelvin cycle. In a round thing, we say Kelvin cycle happening inside the chloroplast. So this is the chloroplast. Okay. So as you can see that in CAM pathway, they're combining the C3 because the whole thing is taking place inside the mesophyll cells and they're also adopting the C4 because the C4 pathway, phosphoenol pyruvate reacting with carbon dioxide forming oxaloacetate, oxaloacetate forming mallet, Mallet is then staying in the vacuole in the night time, in the morning time, as uh, as you can see the red arrows, as uh, pointed by the red arrows. These red arrows means morning reactions, daytime reactions. They're coming out of the vacuole and entering the chloroplast, where it is getting oxidatively decarboxylated. Carbon dioxide coming out. This carbon dioxide is entering the CC or the Kelvin cycle. So uh, again, let's look at a uh, 
diagram of this uh, pathway. Okay, I'm trying to pull this thing. Now, finally, I've been able to pull that. All right, so let's go to the... So here is the detailed pathway of the CAM. You can see here, You see how carbon dioxide is entering. The blue arrow means a nighttime reaction. This carbon dioxide reacting with PPP and forming oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate now is um, oxaloacetate is now basically entering. It's converting into mallet. Mallet is entering inside the vacuole. Uh, this is the mallet shuttle, and you can see now malic acid stays inside the vacuole for the nighttime. And again, these red arrows designed by the med red arrows in the morning reactions. Or daytime reactions, mallet is coming out, and this mallet now goes to the uh, chloroplast where there is conversion of mallet to pyruvate by oxidative decarboxylation. You can see carbon dioxide is coming out. This carbon dioxide is entering into the Kelvin cycle. Uh, okay, so this is another picture showing how the nighttime reactions and the daytime reactions taking place in the camp pathway. And you see this is a nighttime reaction and daytime reaction. All right, so what have we learned today's uh, lecture? We have learned about uh, what is photorespiration. We have learned about what, how the C4 plants, they uh, bypass this problem of photorespiration. And we have also learned about, and then we learned about Kranz anatomy, uh, how the C4 plants have a Kranz anatomy, and how, uh, and also we learned about the CAM pathway, the translucent um, acid metabolism pathway that happens in case of uh, the desert plants. So uh, we will uh, stop here. Uh, we learned about what is cotoactive opening and all these concepts. So uh, we'll stop here and uh, watch my biocool classes. Uh, for more such uh, classes and to get so much of information that will help you in uh, your exams. So uh, all the best and keep watching my lectures. Bye-bye.